and now we're going to travel to Illinois. She's a shining star in the world of art quilting. Her award-winning creations are distinguished by their multi-level illusions of light and motion. Today's American Quilter takes you for a look at the private world of quilt artist Carol Breyer Fallert. I think that people are just sort of born looking at the world a certain way. Carol's world begins each morning pretty much the way it does for most of us. I usually get up in the morning kind of thinking about what I'm going to do that day. And I usually go into the den where I curl up on the couch and get out my computer and maybe read my email, sort of planning my day. But when she heads over to her quilting studio, any similarities between our day and hers end, and the magic that is Carol Breyer Fallert begins. I try in all of my work to create the illusion that there is a glow from within. What draws you into the design is not so much the color as the value or the quality of light. That painterly quality is Carol's trademark, from colorful fantasy works to textural abstracts. I was a painter and when I started making quilts I just found that fabric was a much more expressive medium for the ideas that were in my head. I can draw things with my two hands on the sewing machine that I'm not able to draw with a pencil with my hand. This is the second art quilt I ever made back in 1983 and 1984. It's the only quilt that I ever completely hand pieced and hand quilted. But I have way more ideas than I can possibly make sewing by hand. And so um, I, I've just fallen in love with the sewing machine. And people have fallen in love with Carol's quilts. She is the only three-time winner of the coveted American Quilter Society Best of Show Award. This is a big international show. Winning any big award like this is very exciting and very gratifying. I feel like the luckiest person in the world to have, first of all, found something that is the work of my heart, and then being able to find a way to actually make a living at it. For Carol, sharing and teaching her art is as important as creating it. So when I finish a design, whether it's hand-drawn on paper or designed on the computer, I print it onto a sheet of clear acetate and put it on an old-fashioned overhead projector. Each of the shapes between the lines, of course, will become the templates for cutting the fabrics for the quilt. So anytime you have a design like this that has repetitive elements, whether they're in a traditional quilt or in an abstract design like this, it gives you an opportunity to use a series of colors in a gradation from either light to dark or color to color. For example, we'll call this group A and this group B, and we're going to start on the dark end with A and the light end with B, A, B, A, B, A. And here we have intersecting color and value gradations, and it just makes the eye vibrate. I've developed a method that I call apple piecing, and I'm actually going to fold over this seam allowance right over the edge of the paper. So once I put this on the light box, I can actually see the registration marks I, meant I made across that seam line before I cut it apart, and I can get the edge of the paper exactly lined up. Then I take a little bit of scotch tape, and I just put it perpendicular to the seam to just hold it in place and keep it flat. Then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this edge with a narrow zigzag stitch and invisible thread and everything in the whole quilt will fit together absolutely precisely. Carol ventures all over the world teaching, lecturing, and showcasing her quilts, but she is no stranger to travel. A flight attendant for over 25 years, it was in a quilt shop on a layover that she was first exposed to art quilts. And it was like an epiphany. I wanted the whole package. <laughs> Wherever she travels, Carol always heads back to the Illinois home and studio she shares with her husband, Bob. He frees me up to actually focus on my work sometimes by handling the every day running around, um, going to the grocery store, running to the post office. My business card says vice president in charge of toting and fetching. And 
That's, uh, that about sums it up. Oh, wow. Carol meets with other professional art quilters once a month in Chicago. I brought Splendor in the Grass, number one, which was the quilt. The Guild I... provides a venue for sharing projects and ideas, as well as a place for fellow quilters to bond. Your quilting buddies are the first people you call if you've got trouble, and the first people you call if something good happens in your life. She has pioneered a lot of things for us. She's gone out and taken the risks and taken the chances and discovered how to treat this, what we do, as a profession rather than as a hobby. Taking creative risks and expressing her personal vision has established Carol as one of the foremost contemporary quilt artists of our time. But for Carol Breyer Fallard, there are still paths to be discovered and new roads to travel. It's not about a destination. It's about the journey and noticing the things along the journey and enjoying what you discover. It, it's a constant new discovery every time you sit down and make a new quilt. That's where the magic is. I'm just in awe of Carol's work. It's truly extraordinary. Mm -hmm.